It's lunchtime, and the cafeteria is jam-packed. You balance your books and your corn dog as you make your way through the crowd when someone bumps into you. Whew. Okay, you manage to hold on to everything but one of the books. And as you bend down to pick up your dog-eared copy of Hunger Games, oh, your pants tear right in the back in front of everybody. <sighs> Welcome to Wellcast. We've gotten a lot of suggestions for this one from viewers like Cream Soda Pop 8990 and Cool Birch. Today, we're exploring embarrassment. We'll explain exactly what your brain is doing the moment after you trip in front of everyone and give you our three-step method for brushing it off and moving on. Are you ready? Like many of the emotions you experience daily, embarrassment is a biological reaction drilled into our brains by generation after generation of embarrassed ancestors. Embarrassment occurs in a boomerang-shaped region right behind the eyes called, get ready for this, pregenual anterior cingulate cortex. Okay, that's a mouthful, but you can just remember it as pack. You know, like, pack my belongings, I am moving to Canada and never returning, I am so embarrassed. Researchers at UC Berkeley discovered that the pack lights up whenever someone's embarrassed. They did this in an experiment where they forced subjects to, get this, sing the Temptation song, My Girl, a cappella, and then watch a video of their performances. Cruel, right? Activity in pack shot up and corresponded with sweaty hands, racing heartbeats, and general expressions of, oh my god, this is horrible. That's where we come in. It's time for our three tips to getting over embarrassment. Step one, force yourself not to be the center of the universe. You need to convince yourself that whatever just happened isn't as big a deal as your mind is rapidly making it. Odds are it isn't. In fact, there's a tested scientific principle called the spotlight effect that states that other people don't notice nearly as many of your guffaws as you think they do. One experiment that tested this had a bunch of college students wear bright yellow Barry Manilow emblazoned t-shirts to an introductory psych course. Afterwards, the students were asked how many of their classmates they thought noticed the ugly t-shirt. Invariably, the guest number was much, much higher than the actual number. So first things first, take a deep breath and repeat the mantra. Science says it's not as big a deal as my brain thinks it is. Step two, don't apologize. Deal with it. Guys, the worst thing you can do after calling a lot of attention to yourself is drawing even more attention by apologizing a lot. Instead, downplay the moment. If you incessantly apologize after an embarrassing incident, you're only telling others that this is a big deal and they should treat it as such. Step three, don't dwell, change the channel. There's a big difference between embarrassment and shame. Embarrassment is often a natural and unavoidable reaction to an awkward circumstance. But if you continue to fixate on what happened, replaying the moment over and over again in your brain, the embarrassment can turn into shame and anxiety. You don't want to carry that around with you. Instead, imagine your mind as a TV and the embarrassing situation as an obnoxious sitcom that's forever in syndication. Change the channel and replace that awful sitcom with something positive. A good memory or a joke or a book that you read that you really liked. Anything to get rid of that junk. Let's recap. Embarrassment is a completely healthy reaction to an awkward situation. Force yourself to remember that this is a big deal in nobody else's eyes but your own. Don't apologize. Instead, try to downplay the moment. And don't replay what happened over and over again. Change the channel. Tweet us at WatchWellCast. Email us at WatchWellCast at gmail.com. Or leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.